Hi, I'm Ben, and today I wanted to talk about the original Final Fantasy VII, one of my favorite games of all time. Particularly, I wanted to speak about the theme of identity. First, I want to remind everyone that we have Spanish subtitles. Tenemos subtitulos en español. Who are you? I think that is one of the hardest questions to answer in life. I think not everyone has a clear perception of who they are, or don't accept something about themselves, so they deny it, consciously or not. And even if you are aware of who you are, humans are too complex for words to explain them. While there is something that is a problem for mostly teenagers, which was the sales target of the game, it is a very complex thing that everyone can have problems with regardless of your age. Final Fantasy VII obviously can't answer the question for any of us, but many of the characters in the story come to the realization of who they are during the game. Identity is one of the more obvious themes in the game, and I haven't seen it mentioned very often, so I felt like giving it a shot. Many of the main party members and Sephiroth struggle with their identity. The most obvious case is Cloud. One of my favorite things in Final Fantasy VII is the Nibelheim incident, especially Sephiroth's portrayal and the double plot twist. I'll go over the plot twist briefly to give some context on the execution of that theme in the story, because it is relevant for Cloud, Sephiroth and Tifa. And because I really really want to talk about it, this is my video so I'm doing it. The Nibelheim incident is explained three times. The first one is by Cloud, the main character the person who the player identifies with. In that story, Cloud tells you how five years ago his idol Sephiroth took Shinra infantrymen and him went to Nibelheim to check on a reactor. The basic theory began taking pictures with Tifa, going on what looked like a fun adventure despite falling for one period, and in the reactor things happened. Long story short, Sephiroth discovered he was an experiment, the son of Genova, or so he believed. He also thought Genova was an ancient and that the planet was kind of his birthright. Anyway, he started to kill people. He burned Nibelheim, killed Cloud's mom, Tifa's father, almost killed Tifa. Still, Genova was going to face Cloud and... That's where Cloud ended the story, because he couldn't remember what happened. After the retelling, Tifa shows some doubts regarding the story, but it doesn't seem major at the time. The second retelling was much later in the game, after Eric died. And it was Sephiroth. As it turns out, according to Sephiroth, Cloud was never there. Instead, we had this unknown character named Zack. Of course, Cloud doesn't believe Sephiroth. And neither do you, or at least I didn't. But Sephiroth shows Cloud the picture taken with Tifa, and instead of Cloud you see Zack, and... it gets worse. Tifa, who died Cloud after his first retelling, confirms that Sephiroth isn't lying. At that point in the story, Cloud had had headaches and flashbacks of that day, which is kind of justifiable due to PTSD. You had seen Tifa acting weird towards Cloud a few times, and you had seen President Shinra not recognizing Cloud. Which could honestly be because, as he said, not everyone's a Sephiroth. All those things I just stated paint a very clear picture now. Cloud wasn't in Nibelheim, and Cloud believes it. It was also during this second retelling that Sephiroth convinced Cloud that he was nothing but an experiment from Hoya, that basically became what Tifa remembered of Cloud. This is the first instance in which you realize, or at least I did at this point, that Cloud might not be who he thinks he is. During most of the game, Cloud is this strong, confident hero, but he actually mostly does what other people tell him, especially if it comes from Tifa. However, after believing Sephiroth's words, Cloud no longer knows who or what he is. He even asks Hojo to give him a number like Red 13 has. And honestly, that entire part of the plot is brilliant, confusing and somewhat heartbreaking. After some weird kind of magical shit happened, Tifa and Cloud enter Cloud's subconscious and you see Cloud's memories and for the first time you see something close to who Cloud is. I mean, who Cloud really is. As a kid he was mostly alone, and he wanted to be with the other kids. At some point after everyone left, he told Tifa he wanted to join Soldier, and be like the great hero Sephiroth. 
In a memory two years after that flashback, you see the third retelling of the Nibelheim incident. Cloud did go there, and Zack did go there. The plot twist this time was quite simple. Cloud, ashamed of not making it to Soldier, and much less achieving a status similar to that of the idealized Sephiroth, was unable to accept himself. So he wore a helmet, he was one of the infantrymen, and he did face Sephiroth, and he won. So during the flashback, Cloud had trouble accepting his identity, so he hid. After the flashback, Cloud took both the persona of Zack and the persona of the Cloud Tifa remembered, never truly being who he really was. After the second retelling, he fell to despair, believing he was something he wasn't. And now finally he knew who he was and came to peace with that. It is only after this moment that he never had trouble again with Sephiroth's mind control. And at the end of the game, it was this that allowed him to defeat his old idol, Sephiroth. I want to talk about Barret now. First, some context. This time I'll really keep it short. Barret was from a mining town called Corel, and he had what looked like an inseparable best friend. At some point, Shinra wanted to build a reactor in this town, and only Barret's BFF, Dine, objected. Eventually, Barret convinced him that it was a good idea, so the reactor was built but there was a malfunction. Shinra blamed it on terrorists, then tried to kill everyone to hide the truth, and that day Barrett lost his arm and everything but his best friend's daughter, Marlene. Barrett decided to raise her, and she calls him dad despite Marlene probably remembering dying. Barrett, due to the guilt he felt for the incident, decided to replace dying in that role at least. At the time it didn't seem like he had a connection with Marlene, Barrett also did something else due to guilt, which was join Avalanche and try to destroy Shinra. Something that, as he stated later, he did for revenge and not for the planet. I would also like to point out that it seems ironic to me that Shinra blamed the reactor's malfunction in Corel on terrorists. Then Barrett decided to become a terrorist to blow up reactors. Midway through the game, it turns out that this dying guy, Barrett's BFF, survived. And like Barrett, he has a gun for an arm, like Barrett, he's angry and wants to destroy stuff. But unlike Barrett, this guy was alone. Like Barrett said, they were the same, and they both had blood on their hands. But Barrett at least was able to live with it, to live with the weight and keep moving forward. Dying, unable to accept that, committed suicide. Due to tragedy, both took on a destructive persona. The big difference is that Dine, who seemed like a leader in the flashback, became a loner, while Barrett, on the other hand, became a leader and a father. Two things he wasn't, but that Dine was. Barrett lost the leading role despite, in my opinion, being good at it once Sephiroth entered the narrative and Cloud took that role. And Cloud took the leader role. It is also noteworthy that Barrett didn't take that role when Cloud left. Instead, it was Sid. Maybe Barrett didn't really like to lead because it really was something he took from Dine and that he never grew into. But Barrett did become a good father for Marlene, clearly showing at the end of the game that that's who he was, and that was his purpose in life. At the end, Barrett was no longer concerned by revenge, but by the safety of her daughter. Next character I want to talk about is Tifa. Tifa has mostly the same context as Cloud. And Tifa, unlike Barrett, who at some point tried to be like Dine, and Cloud, who literally tried to be Zack, she was simply lost after the Nibelheim incident, which is obviously understandable. Tifa takes more of a role in this theme with regards to how she treats Cloud, kind of molding him, trying to keep something of her past alive. But like I said, it is true that she is lost, and she doesn't know who she is or what to do, which is why she has a dependency on Cloud, because he is her tie to the past. For example, she's kind of part of Avalanche but doesn't go on missions until Cloud goes there, and she does it to keep an eye on him, not for the planet and not for revenge. She's generally concerned for his safety, but it's also limiting Cloud's fragile mind to be who he is, and it's also keeping her tied to Nibelheim. It isn't until she enters Cloud's subconscious and guides Cloud through really finding his true self, that Tifa lets Cloud be Cloud, and she herself loses her tie to the past and finally grows as well. 
There's more characters that I can talk about with regards to this team. Maybe I'll do a part 2 on this team. For example, Reeve or Ketsif, however you wanna call him, is initially a spy working for Shinra. Red 13 refuses to use his real name until he learns the true story of his father and loses the shame of his heritage. Yuffie fights for a legacy she's never had, calling herself the Great Ninja Yuffie. Aerith accepted her little inheritance of the White Materia and went to cast Holy. Sephiroth lost his identity and went from hero to villain in a very short period of time. Anyway, I hope you enjoyed the video, leave a like if you did, comment and subscribe to help us grow it. I really enjoyed doing this script, I'll probably make a second part either way, but the video doing well would increase the odds of that. See you guys next time.